So, you want to start watching Boruto. You've seen clips and highlights on YouTube or TikTok and are excited to give it a go, but mostly you just read people online complaining about the show. It's cringy, it's boring, it's slow, they say. What's wrong with Boruto? And is there a way to make watching the show far more enjoyable? You've come to the right place. Today I'm going to break down the best way to watch Boruto. Surprise, you don't actually need to watch all 240 episodes. So why do you need an episode guide? Much like Naruto, Boruto has a lot of anime-only content. The problem with Boruto, however, lies in the fact that Boruto is a weekly anime that follows the storyline of a monthly manga. Yeah, imagine trying to stretch 12 chapters a year into 52 episodes. It's basically impossible and means that the anime has to come up with its own filler arcs to kill time and let the manga get ahead. But the major difference here is that the creators have declared everything that airs in the show to be canon to the anime itself, even when the content is blatantly filler material. These arcs are called anime canon, and many of them have heavy pacing issues, bad writing, and just feel lackluster. Some arcs are weaved into the manga plot and become important to the story, while others just aren't worth your time. This makes it quite complicated to watch, with no clear line between what's important and what's filler. That's where I come in. I've compiled this list to help people get the most out of Boruto, helping you get to the best arcs as quickly as possible without missing any key plot points. This is by far the most streamlined way to watch Boruto and considerably cuts down the time commitment. Without further ado, let me show you the complete guide to watching Boruto. Starting off, we have the Academy Entrance Arc, episodes 1 through 15. This arc is anime original and sets off the story quite well by introducing the cast of characters and giving you a taste of what's to come. It's also the first time in the Naruto franchise where we get an in-depth look at what goes on in the Ninja Academy at Konoha. Given Naruto only lasts at the Academy for the first two episodes in the original show, I found it fun to learn more about how shinobi are actually trained before becoming Genin. There's some pretty slick fights here, an unexpected plot twist, and some pretty interesting development for Boruto as a character. After skipping a few filler episodes, we have episode 18. This features an adapted OVA of Naruto becoming Hokage and is an absolute must-watch. Moving on, we have the Sarada Uchiha arc. This is the first bit of manga canon in the show, and it involves the adaption of a Naruto guided novel written by Kishimoto himself. The villain is decent and the final fight is a spectacle to watch. A few pretty major events happen as well. You might also recognize some old characters from Shippuden make their return, which is pretty cool. Next comes the school field trip arc, and it's a return to anime only content. I'm gonna be honest, this one is pretty boring, and I'd recommend skipping it if it weren't for another anime arc far down the road that directly involves the characters exclusive to this arc. At this point, you should kind of have a feel for the show and know whether or not you like the anime canon. If so, then by all means watch this one. However, if you choose to skip it, just know that Sarada copies a jutsu from one of the ninja she fights and tends to use it later on in the show. But that's about all you missed. Some people like this arc, some people don't, but it's pretty optional. Following that is the graduation arc. Now this may be anime exclusive, but it's definitely not to be skipped. Boruto and his classmates get some heavy character development here and grow as ninjas as they battle the shinobi of the previous generation. Boruto's resolve is tested to the limit, and there are plenty of iconic callbacks to the original Naruto training arcs. Next is episode 39, which officially marks the start of the Boruto manga with technically chapter 0. This is a one-shot by Kishimoto that gives us the backstory to Mitsuki and his origins. It's a phenomenal episode and to this day still one of my favorites in the whole show. After skipping a handful of episodes, we finally arrive at the tuning exams. Congratulations, the main storyline is finally starting. This arc covers chapters 1 through 10 in the manga. Get ready to bask in some much deserved character development for our main protagonist and his father. This arc is really well done, with the climax being quite possibly the best episode in the entire Naruto franchise and you can just feel the heart and soul Kishimoto put into it. Now we have entered the long abyss of filler. <clears throat> I mean, anime canon. I'm just gonna cruise through this section and mention a few arcs that might interest you, but everything here is completely optional. By all means, skip this section and save yourself the time and sanity. But if anything I mentioned piques your interest, then I'd recommend checking it out. Episode 70 is the Metal Lee episode. If you're a fan of Rock Lee, Might Guy, and the Eight Gates, then give it a watch. Episode 71 through 92, Mitsuki Disappearance. This arc's popularity is pretty split amongst the fanbase. Some say it's amazing, and others say it's bad. If you like Mitsuki and want to see him grow as a character, then give it a watch, but be warned, it's very long and has serious pacing issues. Episodes 93 to 95, Parent and Child Day. This is a super funny and wholesome arc that adapts a Shinden novel by Kishimoto. It's all about funny interactions with parents and their children. 
Episode 104 is the Mitsuki episode. This is just a wholesome filler episode involving Mitsuki and a cat that the Boruto fanbase is obsessed with. I'm basically obligated to mention it. Episodes 120 to 126, One Tail's Escort. This arc involves a lot of familiar faces and reintroduces a villain previously featured as a major threat in the tuning exams. Episodes 127 to 136, Time Slip Arc. This arc is also quite controversial, but I'd give it a watch because it's a huge blast of Naruto nostalgia and really hits you in the feels. It also reaches a final conclusion for the big bad villain. Whew, you made it. Glad to see you on the other side. We just skipped about 75 episodes of filler. It's time to celebrate the return to manga canon with the Mujina Bandits arc. Now this arc only covers chapters 11 through 15 in the manga, but an anime canon prologue was attached to give more context to the villain and slightly alter the manga's telling of the story. All I'm going to say is things really heat up in this arc. We are approaching the best of Boruto. Next, it's time for the Kara Actuation arc. This is one of the best arcs in the whole show, from start to finish. The first few episodes are a little slow as it builds up the plot, but once the ball gets rolling, it's just full throttle the whole time. There's plenty of good fights, character development, a mini training arc, and some great plot twists along the way. To me, this arc feels the most authentic to that traditional Naruto formula. Everyone gets involved in the action, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Not only is this arc great on its own, but it actually gives some much needed context and depth to the following arcs adapted from the manga. Next we've got the Owl arc. This finally sets in motion some major revelations for the story, and ties up a couple loose ends from the tuning exams. And while it starts answering a few of our long-awaited questions, it also raises many more too. I love this arc. It's a really great display of what the series is capable of when it's at its best. The animation here is superb, the storyline is exciting, and the villains are excellent. Finally, we have reached the Kawaki arc. Remember that guy from the very beginning of episode 1? Like, the very beginning? This is his first introduction, and I'll be damned if he doesn't make the show the most hype it's ever been. This arc covers the majority of the manga's content and is cram-packed with the most action and drama we've ever seen in the show. I'm gonna be honest, this is one of my favorite arcs in the whole Naruto franchise. I'm not even kidding. The stakes are the highest they've ever been and the fights are amazing. Plus, the much needed darkness and grit from the original Naruto finally makes its return here. You're gonna go through a roller coaster of emotions with this one. And that's it for the manga adaption. At this point, you're all caught up with the main story. You can now pick up the manga and start reading at chapter 55, which will begin the code arc. Alternatively, if you're still craving more anime content, there's a few more anime canon arcs left you can watch. The Chunin Reexamination arc has some really fun fights, and Path to Becoming a Ninja is short but surprisingly dark and emotional. I personally have not started the ongoing Great Sea Battle arc in the anime yet, but I've heard people say it's pretty good but a little slow. It most likely won't have any impact on the story and will go down as skippable, but I currently can't say for sure until it finishes and I watch all of it. So to summarize it all up, here is the full list. The rest of the episodes not mentioned here are just generally poor quality and have no influence on the overall story. And it sucks because these are the episodes where the show garners a lot of its hate from. If you like the show and want to watch it all, then feel free as that's obviously the most optimal way to get the full experience. But generally speaking, if you're not a fan of the more childish side missions and slice of life stuff, then this guide is perfect for you. Well, that's about it. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if this helped you out. I'm trying to build up my channel from the ground and we'll be doing more Boruto content in the future. Feel free to add the video to a playlist or your bookmark so you can return here at any time. Thanks for watching.